There'd be a half hour dance music that you fed to the Dixie leg of the network or something. And, uh, but it was thrilling, a lot of it. I would be sent up to the Cotton Club in uh, Harlem. Harlem where Cab Calloway would be appearing at the uh, Cotton Club, and we had to set up the band. You know, you had to set all the instruments and set the mics to work with the engineer in the afternoon, and you'd feed a few numbers from the orchestra back down to CBS headquarters on Madison Avenue, where somebody down there, I don't know who, would be listening to determine that the balance of the orchestra was all right, so the sound would be okay, and I got to to go and do that with Cab Calloway. That was thrilling. And then for a year, because of my musical background, I sat in the control room, tiny little control room with an engineer at the New York Philharmonic every Sunday and, and sat with the engine, had to sit with the engineer with the score. I sat with the score because I could read the score and the equipment in those days could, could not tolerate the extreme variation in sound from very soft to very loud. It, it couldn't handle it. The soft stuff, you had to sneak up the, the volume. The engineer would have to turn up the volume a little. And the loud stuff, he'd have to sneak back on the volume because they had a thing on the transmitters of the local stations in those days called a peak limiter. So if, if the orchestra came in with a big blast from, from the ensemble and the, and the timpani, it would, the peak limiter would actually suppress the sound and it would be terrible. So the idea was for the director to sit with the engineer and smooth that out, make the sound, warn him to bring it up, take it down and do that it was thrilling because I saw all the great composers and great conductors and artists that went through there.